Hello, I am Mr. Well Done. I have watched the copulation which conceived you, and I screamed in horror. I saw you birth like a hatch parasite, hairless and gagging, and I grit my teeth in hatred, sliding them over each other again and again and again, till they were flat and smooth. I will watch you wither and grow old as your body congeals and the weight of your years pulls your flesh from your body. I will grin and snicker, laugh and laugh. I will see your desiccated corpse pumped full of superficial chemicals and turned into the dirt to feed the eyeless subterranean creatures of this earth. I will howl because I know where you are going. I know the secrets of this earth as I knew the secrets of the one before it and I will bring about the end and you cannot stop me. You read these tales and you do not know what each one that you read with each one you create and recreate, with each one you retell, with each one you claim ownership of, you beckon the end. For there are some among you who will try to verify these tales. You will seek them out, those that do so with passion and will find many of them to be falsehoods. But some will be harrowing at the very least. Others will leave you scarred for the rest of your fleeting days and others will leave you stripped of your flesh, and that flesh will be used to build more and more tales, twisted and stretched to cry out more curious individuals. I will smile, my teeth clenching together tightly, 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 until one cracks with a satisfying pop, my eyes unblinking, watching everything fall into place, wide and empty, weeping and shriveling, with delicious protracted agony. I am so excited, so very excited. Even as you listen to this, some among you are emboldened, the sick part of you which lusts for the end. Whisper into your mind, making you want to see the horror, the pain, the blood, and the death. You want to see it. You want to see what lies hidden in the dark, beyond sight, smell, taste, hearing, and touch. Come, come and see. I will show you such wonderful things. It is not what you cannot see in the dark that you fear. It seems the masses have comforted themselves with the trite statement, people fear the unknown. Humanity finds a strange comfort in this statement. If people did indeed fear the unknown, this statement would be akin to locking eyes and spirit with that soul-rendering horror which lurks in the unseen the black of every human's mind. No, it is not what you cannot see in the dark that you fear. It is what you will see if you gaze too long into it. You will see the thing that you know you will see. You will attempt to assuage that sting of fear in your mind by numbly assuring yourself it's simply a figment of your rampant faculties of the subconscious. It is not. Yes, we fear the dark for a reason. The reason is not what you think it is. Many fellows, in their markedly less than infinite wisdom, choose to prove their gender and sexual orientation by seeking out a locale rumored to be frequented by the events of the supernatural. What a loathsome and paradoxical term, supernatural. How can a thing be above nature when it is naturally occurring? I digress. Many such brave souls who set out in search of the nocturnal thrills of the unknown find that there is little to fear despite the cold sweat they feel, and choose to take this evidence as answer to whether or not the supernatural exists in our shared perception of the world. What fools! Indeed, if one steals themselves over much, such in an individual way, that he will never see anything beyond the mundane. It is those that embrace their fear 
to find much more startling evidence supporting the possibility of unearthly entities and energies beyond our current understanding. Fear is more than a biological warning to impending danger. It is a sense, with little difference than the five most people are familiar with. To ignore one's fears, to close one's eyes, to such secrets possessed of beauty beyond most mortals' imagination. And so I impart this advice upon those who wish to confirm the existence of the supernatural. Exalt yourself in your fear. Stoke its fires and seek out the darkness. And you will see such wonderful things. Of all the most wonderful things to be seen in this world, the best of them lay in periphery of the worldly, the superficial, the mundane, the worthless, the duplicious, wretched, horrid, loathsome, hated, despicable, sickening, vapid reality which humanity clings to. Pardon me. But in the corners of the eye lay unknown gems amidst the refuse. Those fitting shapes humanity unconsciously assigns to the readily explainable, acceptable normalities of the social world which haunt us, leaving us with a vague fear that begs our eyes to close so very tightly when the lights are put down for an evening's rest, and not to open again until the reassuring light of the morning dispels the possibilities of the darkness. What waste, what ridiculousness, Open your eyes and use the wondrous capabilities of this fantastic organ. As you go about your evening hygienic rituals, I suggest you pay indirect attention to the cold black of the hallways waiting outside the door. Wait for the inevitable thing, out of place with the characteristic stillness of the night, swiftly passing by to unknown destinations. But do not acknowledge it. Do not. Do not. Do not. Some things are best only seen and not interacted with in other ways. For in seeing that which believes itself unseen, awareness comes with the most severe of consequences. So severe. Do behave. Look, but do not touch or speak or taste. Only then, perhaps you will hear faintly on the first occasion but on every occasion thereafter impossible to ignore. Even as they stand now so clearly leering at you from the darkest corners of your safest, most sacred havens, do not acknowledge their presence. Be content to observe. Yes, content. Such contentness is only a barrier against their predations. If you do this, if one can stand the temptations of the darkness and control one's primordial self, perhaps then you will be prepared. Prepared for more. Much, much more. Tales of strange creatures, occurrences, and sightings persist from the first days of man until today. To discard them out of hand is foolishness, as it is to believe blindly. But for those that seek out the dark, you will see the horrors which will shatter your human mind. There was once a time when man understood his place in the universe, but things change, always changing. Though even in recent history there have been those that have understood However, such individuals' wise insight is turned to examine the mundanity of nature rather than its unexplainable qualities. What waste! The bulk does not understand, will never understand that there is only fear and blind denial, even when faced with old truths that the human mind shuts itself off and the person attempts desperately to find any mundane explanation possible to retain sanity. Sanity, a creature wholly wrought of comparison and worthless society. Only those bold enough to search in the dark, blind and senseless, will see the old truths. You will see, 
you will understand your place. You will experience feelings so powerful and varied that you will be unable to assign words to describe the experience. And then it will all end. Can one be simultaneously amused and disgusted? Apparently so. Humanity disgusts me for its constant squabbling over little pieces of paper, hierarchical conflicts for power that exist only in the imaginations of those involved, and the pointless use of lives in order to sustain nothing but a paltry level of comfort. I am sickened, and yet I am also entertained. It's like watching some cruel joke unfold. I sit waiting for one among you to d ascend to greater powers than known to the bulk of humanity. But so few are willing to aspire, so full of yourself, so assured that you already know the workings of the universe. You rob yourself of the greatest of mysteries. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see it all end. I cannot wait to watch you scream and suffer magnificent din of flesh being stripped from bone, which is then made to dance to the whims of the most horrifying destruction the sentient portion of this universe is born witness to. It will be a wonderful taste of vengeance for having been subjected to your monotony, yet I still yearn for even one among you to attain the eyes with which you can see all of the cosmos. But I also yearn for you to pluck your organs from their position of safe functioning, simply to relish the expression of pain and terror on your faces. I wonder if I shall ever be so divided. I wonder what I shall do when such divisions cease. I cannot wait.